just thank God for everybody that, that come out this morning. The Bible says with two or three are gathered, he's in the midst. And we come together, and God, just look for things to happen. Look for God to just show out, because he's that kind of God. Mother said that uh, the lights kind of, you said, flicker, you know, but they stayed on. Amen? We have a way around our house sometimes when the, when, the, when the lights blink. My wife said, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> hey, you got to speak it. Amen. Lights stay on. Please stay on. But God is good, and he's worthy to be praised. So just, just take a little moment of uh, time of meditation and quietness as we stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Because he's worthy, worthy to be praised this morning. Amen. In our own way, let's just thank him. Let's just acknowledge him for being so good to us. Even right now, he's blessing us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For he alone is worthy. For he alone is worthy. For he alone is worthy. He cries alone, for he alone is worthy, for he alone is worthy, for he alone is worthy. He cries alone. We have come into his house together in his name to worship him. We have come into his house together in his name to worship him. We have come into his house Gather in his name to worship Christ our Lord. Worship him, Christ our Lord. Just forget about yourself concentrate on him and worship him worship him just forget about yourself concentrate on him and worship him just forget about yourself, concentrate on him, and worship Christ our Lord. Worship him, Christ 
Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap this morning. You may be seated. And now we have our scripture reading from our deacons. Good morning to everyone. Our scripture this morning comes from uh, 128 Psalms. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walk in his way. When you eat the labor of your hand, you shall be happy, and it shall be well with you. Your wife shall be like fruitful vines in your very heart of your house. Your children, like olive plants, all around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you out of Zion, and may you see the good, the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Yes, may you see your children's children. May the Lord bless and treasure every word. Morning. morning. May I have your attention for the morning announcements? Do you have a passion for 12 to 19 year olds at Ebenezer? Do you want to make a difference as our teens transition to adulthood? Then the outlet planning meeting is for you. We will have an interesting and interest meeting for all adults who would like to serve. Um, on today immediately following 11 a.m. service in the fellowship hall. Please be prepared to stay for an hour. If you have questions, please contact Tabitha Woods, Angela Howard, or Timothy Simmons for more information. On Monday, we have topical Bible study. Um, it's tomorrow in the fellowship hall from 7 to 8 p.m. The topic is when life hurts, dealing with loss, from the book of Job. Light refreshments will be served. All are welcome. Tuesday, noonday Bible study in the fellowship hall from noon to 1245 p.m. Snacks will be served. All are invited. On Tuesday evening, DTM meeting in the fellowship hall at 7 p.m. Trustees ministry meeting at 8 p.m. On Wednesday, Wednesday evening, we will have prayer at 6.30 p.m. in the sanctuary it's to be led by our deacons ministry. Come out and pray with the elders. Immediately after prayer, there will be Bible study in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. We are on an exciting journey through the book of Leviticus. If you have been thinking about attending Wednesday night prayer and Bible study, this is a great time to start. Come join us on Wednesday for an exciting line upon line precept upon precept journey. You will be blessed. Everyone is welcome. Thursday, senior choir rehearsal in the fellowship hall at 6.30 p.m. The musicians of the gospel choir uh, rehearsal in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. This is a musician's rehearsal. Missionary ministry meeting is on Saturday at 10 a.m. Minister Laverne Collins will speak on the intersection of your faith, your history, and your mental health. Breaking the stronghold at 11 a.m. on this Saturday in the EBC Fellowship Hall. All are welcome and invited to attend. Sunday, we will have 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. morning worship service um, next Sunday. The gospel choir will render the music for both services. Sunday school will be at 9.45 for all ages. On Sunday afternoon, Feed the Hungry ministry will serve in downtown Greensboro directly following 11 a.m. service. All ages are invited to serve.
have a card here. Thank you to all of you. There is no mistaking the happiness that comes from knowing people with such kind and giving hearts. I appreciate all the prayers and thoughts and your giving while I was in the hospital again. I know how blessed I am to be a part of Ebenezer. Love, Betty Cook Brown. At this time, we would like to recognize all visitors. If you are visiting with us this morning, please stand and give, give us your name and any remarks you may have. This time, visitors, please stand. Amen. 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 You have any remarks? Certainly appreciate y'all visiting with us this morning. Uh, icy morning, but we did press our way in. I, I kept looking at the, the pastor's feed on Facebook to see if that was going to change. and It didn't change, so we pressed our way in, me and my lovely wife. Amen. Glad to be here. Here at Ebenezer, we like to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. If your birthday or anniversary is today through this Saturday, please stand at this time and be recognized. Amen. Amen. I have a lot of work for you. <laughs> uh, I forgot to stand last week. Uh, my brother on January the 10th, Alessandro Lane, turned 61 years old. Amen. 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 All righty. Uh, before I end announcements, uh, i I've been down and out for about two weeks. I think I've been the sickest I've ever been in my life with congestion, head and chest. Um, it is really a struggle to, to stand up this morning and speak, but uh, I told my wife, I said, I got to get back moving. So y'all continue to pray for me and uh, keep this breath coming in and out of the body. Hallelujah. This concludes morning announcements. morning, church. So glad everybody pressed their way here this morning. Um, glad everybody made it here safe, and let's pray for the people that may be on their way. We have some um, offerings today from Brother Eddie Swinton, uh, Lester G., and looks like Miss Anita Woods, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for bringing us here on this Sunday morning, God. 
Dear God, we thank you for your grace and mercy with this potential weather that we could have gotten. Dear God, we thank you and praise you for sparing us, God, because it could have been much, much worse. Dear God, we thank you and praise you for assembling us here today, God. We ask that you put a word in our heart, God, that will continue to help us to strive to be more like you. Dear God, we ask that you bless everyone that's here, everyone that's on their way, and bless this offering, God. Let it be a blessing to Ebenezer and to the world as a whole. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Let us stand and follow the directions of the ushers. I got one of my lead singers just came in. I'm trying not to sing, so I know he's going to be here, so we're going to do uh, In the Name of Jesus. In the Name of Jesus. That's all. Okay. All right. C sharp. All right, we're going back to glad I got Jesus. <laughs> See. <laughs> Glad I got you. Oh Lord, I'm glad I got Jesus. Oh Lord, yeah. Glad I got a friend. I'm glad I got a true, true friend. Oh Lord. I'm glad I got a friend. Oh, oh Lord. Glad I got a savior. I'm glad I got a savior. I'm glad I got a savior. Yes, I am. Glad I got Jesus. Do you? Are you glad? I'm glad I got Jesus. Oh Lord, I'm glad I got Jesus. Oh Lord. A true savior. Yeah. I'm glad I got a savior. Oh Lord. Yeah. I got Jesus. I got Jesus. Anybody got Jesus? If you know you got Jesus, let me hear you clap your hands. If you know you got him, stand up on your feet. If you know you got him, you ought to show some sign. If you know you got Jesus, let me see you clap them hands. Let me see you clap them hands. Listen. Glad I got Jesus. I'm glad I got Jesus. Oh Lord, I'm glad I got Jesus. Ow! Hey Lord, hey. I 
Agadil. Agadil. Anybody got Jesus? You ought to show some sign. Walk me up this morning. Started me on my way. Had my head that screamed. Clothed in my right mind. Put food on my table. Gave me water to drink. I, 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 I. I'm glad I got Jesus. Hey Lord, I'm glad I got Jesus. Oh, hey Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank God for the men this morning. How many know Jesus? Glad I got Jesus down in my heart. He woke us up this morning and I right minds. Glad I got him. Do you have him this morning? Amen. Glad I got Jesus. Where? In my heart. I don't think sometimes we get a true revelation of, of that. He's in our hearts. He's with us. Great is he that is what? In us than he that's in the world. Amen. Now it's time to move on to our moments of meditation. Deacon Mebbin is going to come and lead us in prayer. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Most kind, everlasting, heavenly Father, this morning. There's so much, Father, we can ask of you this morning. But, Father, we just want to take time out to just say thank you. Thank you, Father, for our life, our health, and our strength. Father, thank you for op letting us open our eyes this morning and see the beautiful trees with the ice hanging on them. <laughs> Father, thank you for just letting us have breath in our body this morning, food to eat this morning, Father. We found out our legs would move this morning, Father. We was able to walk in here this morning, Father. Thank you, Father, for a roof over our heads last night that we were able to lay down in our comfortable beds and have a good night's rest. Thank you, Father. We just want to just say thank you, Father, for our prayers that you have already answered. Father, thank you for raising those people from their sick beds this morning, Father. Thank you, Father, for going by the rest homes, Father, touching those sick people. Father, we ask these prayers in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
to know. blessing on the way. It's harvest time. I just want to personally just thank you all for pressing your way out uh, this morning to our 11 a.m. service. I know many of you looking at the news and um, pray for us on these Sundays. It looks like a, another uh, snowstorm or occurrence will happen on next week and also possibly. So just pray. Um, I actually get out early in the morning and kind of go around and check the streets. Uh, we've got a, our transportation worker, uh, Gigi Lenny. He has to go out, too, and to make sure everything is flowing. So we're really trying to make uh, good decisions with that. It's a little tougher now that we have our 8 a.m. and 11 a.m., but thank you so, so much. Uh, we try to put it out there on the media. Uh, we put it on Facebook. We've got it on our signs. We've got it on Fox 2 or Fox, Fox 8, uh, 2, and whatever that other one is, 12. So please, please, please just check those. We try to keep it up to date, but thank you so much. I want to give a shout out to all of our um, staff and workers that are here today, uh, to our meal corps. Haven't they done an excellent job today? Yeah, I'm, thank you uh, to Tony, uh, who leads them, just getting them together to press their way out and uh, getting some songs together today. To our ushers, thank you so much. 
um, they started coming in. I said, well, we got two. We can put one at the back and one at the front. But thank you, Urshers, for just being on the floor today. We just bless you to our media staff, our sound, our musicians. Thank you for being here. And to all the pastors and ministers that came out here, uh, I see my, my buddy that's here. Thank you for uh, standing today and your beautiful wife. I, I suppose you cancel your service, so that's why you're over here, right? Well, well bless your heart. Um, we, we tend to stay a little closer to the Lord, so we knew that it was going to be all right uh, over here at Ebenezer. So uh, it's okay. It's okay today. But, but bless your heart uh, for being out here today. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord today? Good to be. What I want you to do today, um, we don't get to do this often, but I want you to uh, do some, some fellowshipping today. Uh, Tony, you remember that song, Welcome to Ebenezer. Remember that? All right, so we're going to do that. We ain't did that in a long time. Some have been requesting it, and during that, uh, we want you to just go around, because y'all don't get to do this often. A lot of times, we don't have the movement around, so we're going to sing that today. Welcome to Ebenezer, the house of the Lord. Come on to your feet. I want you to fellowship with one another. Welcome to Ebenezer, the house of the Lord. Welcome to Ebenezer. We're all on one accord. You are welcome to sing your song. You are welcome to clap your hands. You are welcome to testify or even do your dance. We are building the ark. Won't you come along to verify it? We're glad to welcome you. Welcome. We're glad to welcome you. So stay and enjoy the Lord. That's what we aim to do. Welcome. to your seat. Amen. 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 Well, don't you feel better being able to get out and uh, be able to contact people that maybe you don't get to uh, meet on a normal basis, so thank you so much. Well, I've got a, a word from the Lord. I've, I've had it, uh, and since I didn't have an 8 o'clock service, I am, I've got plenty of energy and uh, I'm just excited. I got up this morning early and ate breakfast. I usually don't get to eat breakfast, so I got plenty of energy. So are you ready for God's Word today? Amen. Amen. So if you grab those Bibles or devices to follow along with us, I want to go back to Revelations chapter 1. Revelations chapter 1. And I want you to I'll go to that 17th verse. Uh, remember our revivalist came uh, in, uh, Pastor uh, Milton Battle. And he brought forth out of the fifth chapter of Revelations a word. And so I've gone through um, our, our different revivalists and kind of pulled out and got the context. And we'll be working the context of those scriptures. Uh, it was just led of the Lord. Instead of just going into that fifth chapter, I'm going to back it up. And I've been working my way through Revelations on chapter 1. And we'll go 2, 3, 4 as the Lord's willing to get to that fifth chapter to get that total context. I've had some... Uh, members to come and really wanted me to teach on Revelations and some of us that have been here for some time. I've actually taught line upon line, precept upon precept, 
from on just about every book of the Bible on the Wednesday. We've concisely went through that. So I have taught through Revelations, but I realized that was like 10 years ago that I went through Revelations. Um, time kind of moves on real quick. So this will be a refresh for those that have gone through. Um, but God is just really speaking to my heart on some other things. So that Revelations uh, 117, uh, it reads, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this day that you've made. Thank you for allowing us to rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, you know it's tough. Um, you're in control of the weather, uh, no matter what the meteorologists say and uh, the percentages that they try to come up to comfort us and help us to keep us safe. I thank you for them. But Lord, I thank you that um, you can push back storms and you can create storms. Uh, you can tell uh, storms to settle down and behave. So thank you for just allowing us to have this 11 a.m. service, to fellowship uh, with the community, Lord, our brothers and sisters in Christ, to just reach out. Thank you. I need a word today. Uh, the saints of God need a word today. Now, Father, I want to believe today that um, this is our, our faithful ones that are pressed out. Um, Lord, but just in case someone's here that does not know you, would you help them to confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that, Father, you raised him from the dead, and you said they would be saved. Let them know it's by grace through faith and not of themselves. It's a gift from you. Now, Lord, forgive me of my sins. And, Lord, I thank you that even in the temptations, you, you're taking us through. So, Lord, help us to stand strong in you. Therefore, I welcome you, Holy Spirit. You uh, never fail. You never take a break. So, Holy Spirit, would you teach us and guide us and lead us into all truth? Would you make this word so plain, so easy to be understood that even a small child can be transformed to be like you? Would you please be in my eyes and my seeing, my mouth and my speaking, my heart and my understanding? And Lord, we need your anointing. Lord, let this word be so transformative. Even a small child can become like you. Lord, we need a word for today, uh, for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, for every day of our lives. Speak to us, Lord. We know that we're truly living in the last days. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I want to speak from the subject today. Knocks me off my feet. Knocks me off my feet. Can you look at your neighbor? We've kind of greeted. I just want you to kind of repeat this. Say, neighbor, I have a question to ask you. Is there anything... In your life that knocks you off your feet. I want you to think about that. Knocks me off my feet. As we've been progressing um, through Revelations, um, I'll be honest, as a child, this book scared me. Um, I, I felt somehow by not dealing with it that it would stop the inevitable, that it would stop literally um, the end of the world, which the scriptures talked about. But later as I got older, uh, I progressed and God began to minister my heart. I fell in love uh, with the book, this word. And, and specifically in Revelations, it's all through the scriptures, but there's a blessing in reading Revelations. That specifically is taught by the Spirit of God that we are blessed as we read this particular book. Just a little review. The time frame of this book is 95 A.D. 95 A.D. So we're in 2019, a long time ago. But God is able, because he is the first and last, we're going to talk about that, he's able to see into the future because he creates the future. He knows everything. Uh, it's about John's testimony uh, for Christ uh, as he was led by the Roman authorities uh, to, to be exiled. Um, I told you on last Sunday, uh, there's some particular papers outside of the Bible that says that they tried to boil uh, John. They tried to kill him by boiling, but it didn't work. Um, God was able to take the heat uh, out of the Greece, and, and so what they did, they exiled him to this island of volcanic rock, and there they would put the, the prisoners that were truly bad, and and only reason that he's here is because he lifts up the name of Jesus Christ. Can you imagine just because we pressed our way out here to this 11 a.m. service, if police came in and said, just because you believe in Jesus Christ, we're going to put you in prison. 
saints of God, it was happening in that time. And I believe that we're getting into a time that it seems that we can't even speak about the name of Jesus. There ought to be some amens in the house. Who would have thought we would be in a day and time that in our schools it's really uh, prohibited to, to actually pray in the name of Jesus? It's, it's prohibited in so many things. There was a lawsuit that uh, even in our government offices that they can't pray in the name of Jesus. We are living in those types of times. Uh, John was directed by this prophetic word, and he gives it to the selected churches, those seven churches of the Roman province of Asia. From last Sunday, we dealt with Revelations 1-7. Behold, he is coming with clouds. He is coming, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. And we spoke from the subject, are you ready? Now, this is interesting. I know so many people, um, you know, had excuses today not to come out because of the weather and maybe power outages. But if Jesus came back now, if he came back now, I'm um, just kind of looking at all the details and everything. I believe we do meet a passerby every now and then. Everyone who says they're saved, listen to me, may not be saved. We have a few, a few that love the Lord with their whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. Let's do a little review. Uh, if you weren't here from last Sunday, the first point we dealt, it won't be long. It won't be long. I'm telling you, we've got to stay vigilant. I'm feeling the temptation level going up. Anybody else feeling that? There is so much out there, so much to pull us off the track, so much to get us distracted from the Lord's work. Remember, your life should line up with God's Word. There is a blessing in hearing, reading, and keeping God's Word. We can have grace and peace in times of trouble. We have been washed from our sins. We are royally and spiritual. That was good. We are royalty and spiritual to know that we're both of those combined, and every eye will see Jesus. Every eye. It doesn't matter whether you believe or not. Every eye. Every eye is going to see him. We've just chose to bow right now in this life because we proclaimed him Lord. Let's jump into today's lesson, Revelations 1.9. Uh, he says, I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Knocks me off my feet. John is not complaining at this point, and, and this is blesses me. I am trying to get better. Um, my wife is a lot more patient than I am when it comes to not complaining. I, I tend to complain and worry more than her, but I'm trying to get to this point that if I'm in a situation like John, that I'm not going to belly ache, but I'm going to be able to see God's grace and mercy and know that he's up to something. That, that when, when tribulation comes our way, that we know that God is working something bigger than we can even understand. Look at that first part. It said, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. Here's a point for you, our note takers. We are in this together. Yes, we are in this together. Uh, we, we're coming to a point in the church we have to be very careful. It's very individualistic. We, we've got a church over here, church over there, but that's not really the big concern. It's even in the church. You remember there was a time that we really knew the people that were in the church. We would reach out and maybe invite them over for dinner or, you know, love on them or do something. But now our churches are flipping. We've got to be very careful. It's an entertainment-driven church. It's where people come and sit in the dark, right? They come sit in the dark, and they receive entertainment from the pulpit and the choir singing and the preachers preaching, and they never connect with one another. We've got to make sure that we understand in the tribulation, and I believe that we're in that pre-trib, that, that, that struggle that's coming in our lives. The enemy is stepping up his attack. We've got somebody that's on our side. And we've got brothers and sisters that love. Anybody here that knows, you know, I, I love Jesus and I love you. And because we're in it together, we can stand strong. The idea is also seen in Acts when the disciples went out to spread the gospel. Acts 14, 22. Look at this. Strengthening the souls of the disciples exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying, we must through many tribulations enter 
the kingdom of God. Notice that we, we're in this together. Um, this morning I was here, got here early. I knew I was going to get some calls. And um, a lady, dear lady, I hope she's here. She called and she says, I want to come to Ebenezer uh, uh, Baptist Church, but I'm not sure about the van ministry. And so at that point, my wife is sitting there and she knows I looked at her and I said, I might need you to uh, go pick up somebody. You're willing to do that. But I really didn't want to send her out. I called Gigi, got in touch with him, and he said, Leroy's on it. Leroy's on it. So I called Leroy, and I don't know what I'm going to hear. I already called one of our other van drivers, and they said, Pastor, it's just too bad out here. I said, well, it ain't that bad over here where I am. But anyway, I understand. Have a good rest. Sleep good. And so I called Leroy. I said, Leroy, we got the van. And Leroy said, yes, Pastor, I got it. We're in this together. You know what? That blessed me. That blessed me to know there are other people that have a heart for God. And if they can do their jobs, they're going to be out there to do that and realize when we focus in to do our jobs, we're blessing other folks. We're encouraging other folks. And I told my wife, I told my wife at that point, I said, I love me some Ebenezer. I did. Right there in the office, just talking to Leroy, blessed my heart. And I think I told you I loved you too, didn't I? Don't take, don't take it too close. That I, it, it just blessed, blessed my heart, knocks me off my feet. Look at Revelations 1, 10 and 11. John says this. I want you to get this picture. Are you with me today? I want you to walk within the, uh, the, the scriptures. He says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet. Now, I want to stop just briefly on that 10th verse before I go to that next one. He said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's name. That traditionally, traditionally, the Lord's day for us, the Christians, is Sunday. Now, for the Jewish person, it was the Sabbath. That's what God said, which was Saturday, that we could worship the Lord on Saturday. But for the Christians, we decided that we were going to worship the Lord on Sunday because that's the day of the resurrection. That's when he got up. But the scriptures, when you study it, it lets us know that we can worship any day. We can worship any day. And also, we are encouraged to worship every day, to seek him with our whole heart. Look at that 11th verse saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Here's a point for you. Learn to live in the Spirit. Not just to be in the Spirit on Sunday, but we've got to learn to live in the Spirit. That means every day. That means when we get up. When you got up this morning, I I know some of the aches. Remember we talked about groaning on last Sunday. I know some of the groans were there. But God wants us to live in the Spirit, not just on Sunday. Not just on Wednesday or Monday or Tuesday Bible studies, but he wants us to be in the spirit 24 hours, seven days. Now, this is challenging because even when you're looking at Netflix, even when you're at the movies, we're supposed to be living in the spirit. And some of you know there's a challenge that's amongst us because there's sometimes when we get caught up in things that are contrary to God, it's tough to live in the spirit. But John understood something. Yes, this is the Lord's day, but he's not just uh, insinuating that it's just one day. He's saying every day is the Lord's day. Galatians 5.25, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Now, now I know I've got some Pentecostals here. Actually, all of us Pentecostal, it means fire, Holy Ghost. But when we think about Pentecostal, we think about shouting. But please understand, being in the Spirit is not just getting a good shout on. I proved it from that scripture. It says, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. If it was just about getting a good shout on, that means that we got to shout all Monday, we got to shout all Tuesday, we got to shout all Wednesday. But notice the scriptures say, if we walk in the Spirit. That means it's not, I can get my praise on, but literally walking in the Spirit is everything I do, I'm focused on Christ. Everything I'm doing, I'm listening for that voice. I want to be led. So whether I'm loud or quiet, I still got the Spirit on the inside of me because He's changing me from the inside out. Anybody know about the walk of the Spirit? The Spirit causes you to love, to embrace, to to causes you to want to be around uh, Christians who love the Lord. It pushes you. That's the Spirit this morning. 
we, we all had a choice. I had a choice. I had a choice. I was like, you know what? I'm looking at all the churches lined up. And I said, you know what? We, we can just call this thing. We're just going to throw in the white jean. We're just going to throw in the, the, the white flag and just, just go with everybody else. But there was a longing on the inside. I had a word. There was a word from the Lord that, that I realized there was just a few folks that needed a word from God. I, I, I knew. I knew Deidre would probably still up here. I said, if I could just get one here and I get my wife here, we two or three, we can actually have service at 11 o'clock. And I'm so glad because... Because when you walk in the Spirit, there's a yearning to want more of Him. There's a yearning to increase in Him. Christ wants us to speak at all times by His movement, by His Spirit. Look at Revelation chapter 1, starting at that 12th verse. This is a picture. Get into your mind. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. 13th verse, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet, and girded about the chest with a golden band. His feet, or his head and his hair, were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went, look at this, a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. Knocks me off my feet. Here's a point. I want you to really get this. He may not look like what you thought. He may not look like what you thought. Now, this is key. A lot of times we, we have the, the, the pictures of Jesus. We do, and uh, oftentimes he's Caucasian. He's got this nice blonde hair, and, you know, most of the movies, they portray him like that. And, and, and really, what I'm talking about is not really whether he's black or white. He was Jew. That's what the scriptures say. He was Jewish of a background. But please understand there was a transformative, I'll use that, a transformative process that took at him, took, took place inside of him when he was raised from the dead. Notice that. And so it changed him. And many of us think that we'll know what he looks like, but we are going to be shocked. I, I really believe we're, we're going to be shocked uh, for those who are not walking in the Spirit, because as we walk in the Spirit, we actually become more like him. Uh, uh, many symbols, as we look at these scriptures that I read, uh, of a judging. A judgment. We see that long robe that goes down. Also of righteousness and authority we see in this picture here. But notice John wrote in 1 John 3, 2, Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be, are you with me? Like him. For we shall see him. Pastor Edwards, I'm, I'm excited about this. This, this, this. this is why I press my way. This is why I press my way when I get the opportunity to be in the fellowship because I learn more like him. And the more I learn more like him, the more I become like him. It, it even says in that scripture, we're not even sure what he's going to look like, but there's one thing for the real Christian that's in the house. When, the more we walk with him, when we finally see him. But when I finally see him for myself, I know, I, I can't speak for you, but I know I'm going to look like him. I may not look like what I should look right now, but I thank God I don't look like what I used to look like. But God is changing me. Are there any amens in the house? Knocks me off my feet. Even upon Christ's resurrection, there were times that people were actually restrained from seeing his glory. You know, Christ would get up, and there was a time that the change had been taking place so much, God had to pull back and actually say, okay, I can't show you everything. Let me give you a scripture. Some of you are looking at me, Luke 24, 15. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained, so they did not know him. Knocks me off my feet. Jesus had gotten up. You remember on the man's road, uh, the, the people were walking. Jesus slipped up. They're having conversation. They're looking at him. But Jesus somehow puts a veil over himself. 
that picture that we just saw of Christ, they really couldn't handle him in that massage. They could not handle him in all of his glory. So sometimes God just covers himself, but he's still with us. I'm telling you, I believe there's so many, many times in our lives that we've actually missed out on the presence of God. And I've decided that's why I want to walk in the spirit. I never want to miss Jesus. I never want to miss him. I, I want to be transformed to be more like him. But I always be on the watch for him to, to show up. We see in the scriptures that we've actually entertained angels unbeknownst. We, we didn't know that angels showed up and they were veiled, but God is using us and connecting with us more of his glory. Old Testament, uh, this Daniel 7, 9, and 10, look at this. I watched till thrones were put in place and the ancient of days was seated. His garment was white as snow and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. And a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousands, thousands ministered to him. Ten thousands times ten thousands stood before him. The court was seated and the books were open. Knocks me off my feet. Notice within that ninth verse, he's called the Ancient of Days. He's always been here. This picture that we see within those scriptures, it hasn't been something that just shows up. He's always been God and God by himself. Let us not forget that two-headed sword that comes out of his mouth. Hebrews 4, 12 and 13. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit, and of joints, and of marrow, and of the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hebrews 4.13, and there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account knocks me off my feet. So this whole picture here, we've got Jesus, and he, he doesn't necessarily look like what we think he's going to look like when we see him, but we know when we see him, we will be just like him. Look at this, Revelations 1.17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. Now, I want you to get the picture. I, I did. I gave my, my kids, a couple of my kids, an assignment. Only one of them turned it in. I said, I want you to um, draw a picture. I've got uh, good uh, drawers, people who can artist within my family. I said, I want you to draw a picture of Jesus, but I don't want you to look on the Internet. I want you to look at these scriptures, and I want you to come up with what it's saying, what he looks like. And so, so I, I think I got that picture. If the media can bring it up now, I want you to bring it up. Um, this one is actually uh, made by my son. This is, this is Philip. I said, don't look at anything else. Don't go on the Internet. Just look at the scriptures, and I want you to, to draw a picture of him. Now, some of y'all are like, he looked like an alien in that thing. I don't, I don't know what that is. But when you just look at the scriptures, again, he may not look what we thought he was going to look like. Notice this long roll. Uh, we see his feet like brass. He's got those seven stars, those lampstands. He's got that uh, sword comes out. And we know all of this is a symbol that we've gone through. But when John sees this, we don't know if he sees a picture like this or this is just a symbology that's being used at this point. But when he saw him, he said, I fell at his feet as dead. But when I was in that comatose state, he does something. He reaches down with his right hand and he lays it on me, saying to me, don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. Here's a point. Just one look. Just one look. If, 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 if we can get to this point that we can see Jesus for ourselves, all it takes is just one look. Some of you, when I, I said the title today, you went old school. You remember, you remember Stevie Wonder. He actually sang this, and, and he says, I don't want to bore you with my troubles. But there's something about your love that makes me weak and knocks me off 
my feet. He was talking about, I guess, his lover or whoever he was connected with, but there's some of us that are in the house that are falling, falling head over heels in love with Jesus. Anybody here? I'm telling you, he is knocking us off our feet, and, and what I love about this so much is that it does not matter, it does not matter how long you've known him, there's still more love to give. That he becomes more, more beautiful from day to day. Uh, he is the, the rose of chair, and we, we see all of these things. He is the lily of the valley. He is the bright morning star. The more you get to know him, the more in love that you fall head over heels with him. He knocks me off my feet. He's the first and the last. And actually, uh, this name of Christ is used in the Old Testament. Isaiah 44, 6, thus says the Lord, the king of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. This is in the Old Testament. This is, this is years before this point. It prophesied that he is the first and last. He goes on to say in Isaiah 48, 12, listen to me, O Jacob and Israel, my called, I am he. I am the first and I am the last knocks me off my feet. This is good to know because Jesus is saying, I'm there in the beginning and I'll be there when it's finished. I last through the whole thing. That's good within our lives to know that God will always be with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. The other day, I've been, I've been going through this transition of, of putting um, LED lights in my house. LED lights, and, and it struck me. I went, I went to Home Depot, and I, I picked up this light, and I, I looked at it. I said, man, this is the light that I want. And on the box, it said that this light is going to last 45 years. 45 years. 45 years. He said, you, you put this fixture up. You never have to change the light again. You put it up there 45 years. And I don't know why. I, right in Home Depot, it struck me. I started adding 45 plus my life, where I am now, and I said, you know what? There's a strong possibility that I may not be around when this receptacle goes out. So in our kitchen, when I'm putting that light up, I, I, I talked to the kids. I think Joy was there and some of the other ones there, and I began to tell them, just in case in 45 years I'm not here, when this light goes out, you can't just put a bulb in it. You're going to have to actually take it out of the ceiling, and you're going to have to put a whole new receptacle there. And Joy looked at me. She said, so what are you saying, Daddy? You may not be here. And I said, I may not be here. And, and, and I was telling my wife, I said, I want you to remember. She looked at me strange. I said, you know women usually live longer than men anyway, so you need to know about this thing. But isn't it so good to know that even loved ones and our life run around, runs out, that Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the first and last. I will never leave you. I will always be there for you. You don't have to worry about me running out or burning out or going out. I'm always there, the living water above everything. Look at this next verse. I love this one. Revelation 1.18. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Look at this part. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Here's the point. Christ has the keys. Christ has the keys. And, and I'm excited about this because uh, literally as a Christian, we're supposed to come to the point that we're not afraid of death. And, and the reason we are afraid of death, some here, we, we, we're concerned about that whole transition process. Is it really real? But the closer you get to Christ, the more you walk in the Spirit, you understand Christ, he's got the keys. <laughs> Look at that. He said that he has the keys of Hades and of death. Everything that's involved with that, Christ can open the door. I, I'm just so excited. I wanted to bring you this. I, I got a key, and I, I wear it a lot here at Ebenezer. This is my key to Ebenezer. Now, I'm excited about this, Deacon Kelly, because you remember there used to be a time that you had to have like 15, 20 keys to get into Ebenezer. But when we upgraded the church, I said, one thing I want, I want to have one key that gets me in a majority of the doors. So if you get my key, and you ain't going to get it because I always keep it close to me, you can get in just about every door in the church. That's good. All through one key. And what Jesus said, I got the key to everything. There ought to be some hallelujahs in the house. No, no matter what the devil brings your way, I've got the key to it, 
and I can unlock it. I, I'm telling you, as long as you got the key. Technology, I've got a car, one of my cars. You, the key, all it's got to be is in your purse. Yeah, I, I was so excited about that. I got that thing. If I put the key in my pocket, I put the key in my pocket, I can go up to the car, and guess what? I can put my finger on the door, and the door unlocked. And, and the key's just in my pocket. I ain't got to put it in. And I can sit in my car, and I can push a button, and it starts up. All I got is the key in my pocket. And Jesus said, I got the key. I got the key. You've been worried about issues in your life. You've been struggling, and you've been belly aching and going through tribulation. I got the keys. You are connected with me. I am everything. Paul understood this in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 54. He says, so when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But I love this 57th verse. But thanks be to God. I think anybody can walk with me. I, I'm, I'm, I just want to walk through this today. He knocks me off my feet. That's what I'm building up. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, 58 verse, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. In vain, in the Lord. Knocks me off my feet. Now look at this next verse. I want you to get this, Revelation 19 and 20. Write the things which you have seen, and the things which are, and the things which will take place after this. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. Here's a point. When God speaks, start writing. I, I really, we, we're in this technological world, and, and my problem is when God speaks, we're not putting it down. We're not putting it down. You, you got to have some journal entries. That you got to tell, I do, I've got some journal entries, and I, I have a time that I, I put aside that I'm seeking the Lord a Sabbath for an extended time just for myself, and I'm writing down stuff what God has already done. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm putting it down on paper, and there's sometimes, there's sometimes my life gets tough, I'm going through, I got to flip back to some years, and I, I got to look. I said, God, you brought me through that. You brought me through that. I did just the other day. I put it on the kind of thing, stuff I wrote down. I said, I had pneumonia, God. I remember that, and I never want to forget what it felt like not to be able to breathe. I never want to forget that because then if, if I forget it, I may not use my voice the way I should use for you. But when I when it pops up on my account, I said, God, you were good. You, you brought me through that. I remember when I couldn't breathe, I couldn't even take a breath on the inside the way I wanted to. So now, God, I realize you knocked me off my feet. God, I felt like that it was all over at that point. But when I think about what you've done for me, are there any saints in the house? you got plenty of room today. You can give God some praise. Has he done anything for you today? Has he delivered anybody in the house today? Are there any glad folks in the house? When God speaks, start writing. Uh, in the Old Testament, God spoke to Habakkuk. Look at this, Habakkuk 2, 2, and 3. He says, then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that there he may run who reads it. This third verse, this is awesome. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak, and it will not lie, though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tear. It knocks me off my feet. I'm telling you, wait for it. It may seem like he's not coming back. He's coming back. You better wait for it. You wait. It, it, he's just tearing right now. That, that means that he, he's going to come back, but he's waiting for stuff to get in place. And sometimes that stuff to get in place is us. 
Sometimes we are the ones that he's putting our patience in, and he's saying, God, God, just, just hold back, Father. I, I could come back now, but I, I want another soul to be saved. I want somebody else to be delivered. I want the lights to come on in somebody else's eyes. I want them to realize that I'm truly are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Well, on next Sunday, as we conclude this section, I, I hope to deal with the details of the seven lampstands, and which are the church and also the seven stars, which are the angels of the churches. But aren't you glad that you know the one that knocks you off your feet? Now, as we go through this and we pull it together today, if you have a witness of who God is, I just want you to shout when you just get a feeling on the inside. If you don't mind, I just want to tell you how wonderful he is and using the word of Port Lorraine, if you don't mind. She's an amazing artist and she comes up with this poetry she said to the artist he is the one altogether lovely to the architect he is the chief cornerstone to the baker he is the living bread to the banker he is the hidden treasure to the biologist he is the light to the builder he is the sure foundation to the carpenter deacon kelly he is the door to the doctor he is the great physician to the educator he is the great teacher to the engineer he he is the new and living way. To the floors, he is the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. To the geologist, he is the rock of ages. To the horticulturist, he is the true vine. To the judge, he is the righteous judge, judge of all men. To the jeweler, he is the pearl of great price. To the lawyer, he is the counselor and the lawgiver. He is the great advocate. To the newspaper, he is the good tidings of great joy. To the oculus, he is the light of the eye. To the philanthropist, he is the unspeakable gift. To the philosopher, he is the wisdom of God. To the preacher, he is the word of God. To the sculptor, he is the living stone. To the servant, he is the good master. To the statement, he is the desire of all nations. To the student, he is the incarnate truth. To the theologian, he is the author and finisher of our faith. To the toiler, he is the giver of rest. To the sinner, he is the lamb of God. God that takes away the sins of the world. To the Christian, I'm talking to the Christian in the house. He is the son of the living God, the savior. He is the redeemer. He is the Lord. He's the one that went to the cross of Calvary. Nails in his hands and nails in his feet. He dies on the cross of Calvary. They put him in a cold tomb. He stays there three days, but early Sunday morning, I'm talking about on the Lord's day. Are there any saints in the house today? He gets up with all power and all glory and he knocks me come on to your feet and when I saw him I fell at his feet as dead but he laid his right hand on me saying to me do not be afraid I am the first and the last. Father, do what only you can do. Thank you, God, for knocking me off my feet. And you keep doing it over and over again. I'm, I'm head over heels in love with you, God. Thank you for loving me. Father, thank you for even allowing us to be here today. I needed it. So thank you for just turning it up the temperature just a little bit for me. Thank you for being our everything. In Jesus' name. As you're on your feet, I'm going to ask our deacons to come forth and intercessors, our ministers, right across the altar. There's some of you even now, God is just dealing with you. He wants more of you. There's plenty of him. But he wants more of you. More of you. Some of you, you're giving a lot to other things. To job and even the family. That's great. But how much are you giving to Jesus? Have you seen him for yourself? Because once you see it, all it takes is one look. Once you see him, I'm a witness, you will never, ever be the same.
I want to give you three invitations, and then if any of those touch, just come on to the altar. The first invitation, salvation. If you're here today and you're like, man, I don't know that man that you talked about. I looked at that picture. I am clueless about him. Scriptures are clear. It said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, you will be saved. He also says it's by grace through faith and not of yourselves. It's a gift from God. If you're here today, man, and you're, God is making you ready. He's massaging your heart right now. Just ask him to come in your heart. Say, I'm a sinner. I've messed up, God. I want him to be. I want you to be everything to me today. Man, he will save you right where you stand. Said to the sinner, he is the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. You know that today. Ask him into your heart. If you're here today, we ask you to pray that prayer. We invite you to the altar. Come forth. We want to pray with you. We want to encourage you. Second invitation. Maybe you're looking for a church home. A place where you can come and be connected with. The doors of Ebenezer are open. Maybe you say, Pastor, I don't want to connect here. I'm here visiting. And I want to connect with my home church. I'm, I'm excited. Come on up here. We'll, we'll get you connected to Pastor Edwards Church. We just want you to have a place to fellowship and connect. Ebenezer has been so blessed. But what we found out, as long as you're connected with Christ, that's all that matters. If you need a church home, Christian experience, or by letter, would you come grab somebody's hand so that they can pray with you today? Third invitation. Some of you are just excited to be here, but you've got some things in your life. You've got some struggles. You're, you're, you're concerned about some things that are due on next week. You're concerned about maybe your car issue. You're concerned about your health. Maybe some of you are concerned about family issues and relationships. Bring it to the altar. What a wonderful day to come to the altar and say, God, here I am. Someone would love to pray with you. Or maybe just need to get around the altar and press your way. There's plenty of place to kneel. If any of those three invitations, your heart has been touched, you want to get close today, would you come? Would you come? Pastor Edwards, would you make your way on up here? Altar is open. Would you come? Would you come? My Lord, and I know there is joy there. Anybody know that there's joy? Oh, he's faithful. When I'm gone, when I'm gone. the last smile of grace. There's still room, still room, still room. Still room. Our Father and our God, Lord, how we thank you for being the God of glory, the God of peace, the God of love. So much, Lord, that you knock us off our feet. You are amazing, God. You are our everything, God. Even when things are going bad, you are still our God. So, Lord, we thank you for all that you've done today, how you have opened up your word to give us a word of encouragement just to run on a little while longer. Yes, thank you for just giving us more grace than we need. We are everything, Lord. We just we just so, so grateful that you have showed up today. And, Lord, we just ask you right now, be a blessing unto your people who stand before you today, Lord. One have this and one have another. But you are a God that can satisfy us all at the same time. We don't have to stand in line. All we got to do is call on the name of Jesus. Yes, and we shall be blessed. Look upon us right now, Lord. Continue to bless this church. Continue to bless this pastor. Maybe there's somebody here weak in the body, weak in their spirits. Set them free, Lord. Set them free, God. Tell them they can come home. You and the evil God. Lord, remember Pastor Wood in a special way. Thank you for his spirit. 
Thank you for his love for this church, the people of God. Keep holding him up, Lord. Keep holding his family up. Help him to continue to preach the gospel to a dying world. We're ever so grateful for allowing us to meet together here. And Lord, if we have another opportunity, let us come and worship you in spirit and in truth. You're everything to us, Lord. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. A beauty if I work till the close of the day, my Lord, I am sure he will show me his glory. Oh, Lord, when I've gone, the last smile of the rain, where, oh, when I've gone, the last smile of the rain, yeah, Lord, I will rest at the close of the day, my Lord. And I know there is joy that awaits. Oh, Lord, when I've gone, the last mile of the way, yeah, mile of the way. Amen. You may take your seats. When I've gone, the last mile of the way. Thank God for his grace and mercy, and again, opening these doors today. We've got one to stand before us today uh, that uh, has a testimony, wants to uh, be a part of connected with Ebenezer. So I'm just going to ask her to give her name, uh, let us know uh, some details of how she got here to Ebenezer on this almost icy road Sunday. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. My name is Merlin Olsius. And I come from New York um, since August. I've been looking for a church home. Um, my brother-in-law have a church. Um, and last Sunday, it was communion Sunday. And since they are church of God, and um, he told me, well, since you're not a member of the church, we part of church of God, um, you cannot take communion. But I'm used to the communion because I was back in New York. I was, you know, I'm a member of Union Baptist Church. And I said, I went to Google, I said, well, I'm a Christian, I have to go to church. Since I cannot take communion in his church, let me find a Baptist church who will not turn me down. <laughs> so, so I looked, I saw so many Baptist churches, I'm like, oh. So I saw Ebenezer. I'm like, wow. I, I know we um, associate with Union Baptist Church in New York, associate with Ebenezer in New York City. I said, well, I'm used to, to Ebenezer. Let me try them out. So I called someone, um, answer the phone, and I said, I don't have a car. And is, do you have a church um, van? And she said, yes. And she took my name, and they, today I'm here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so throughout the week, I was thinking, I said, well, I'm a member. I'm a, a Christian. I'm a child of God. I cannot be without a home. You know, I don't want to just come and visit, visit. I want to be part of the church. And I said, I'm not going to go look around for another church. This is it. I'm going to become a member. So I'm here today. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, Pastor Edwards, I'm sorry, but she wants to be at Ebenezer. But uh, thank you. Um, uh, I got some I'll trade you with, though. Um, God is good. Uh, Deacons. After hearing that wonderful testimony, how should um, uh, she be received? Amen. 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 We just want to slow it down. You've seen we just like people to be able to see you and connect with you. Ebenezer, if you're willing to get to know her, encourage her, find out where she lives. Uh, she came out, pressed her way today. Can you come to your feet and just give God a hand clap of praise? Amen. Amen. This is your family. You may be seated. You can take a seat right here. Amen. What a great day to take communion. 
this is a great day. I'm excited. I'm excited. Again, as pastors and pastor every now, we're good and we kind of joke and laugh, but it's tough for us. God says, and I preached on this a couple of Sundays in Virginia ago, that we have to watch for people's souls. That is heavy as, as leaders and pastors to watch for people's souls. God is holding us accountable as leaders, not just us, but all those that are in there. So pray for your pastors and your leaders because there is a, a judgment, a heavy judgment that comes for, for us as we strive to do what God has called us to do. And I'm sad for some of my colleagues because I realize that they're failing in that, but ultimately they have to stand before God. So pray for us. And that's why we press our way and we labor and we want to give the best. And it's when people join and souls are saved and delivered, we realize, God, you're up to something. When, when I see people that their steps are ordered all the way from New York to look through a phone book or whatever you do now and see Ebenezer and decide on it. There are a lot of Ebenezer. That's why I had to go Ebenezer, Vandalia Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27407. Make sure you get to the right one a lot. But God says, I want you to be connected to a particular place. Today, as we go into our communion, I want you to really focus on Jesus Christ. He knocks me off my feet. I want you to think about your relationship with him how much you're in love with him, and we're really going to think about who he is today. So right now, I'm going to ask uh, one of our deacons to pray over our bread and one of them pray over the juice, and then I'm going to ask our uh, musicians to play some quiet music, male chorus, to possibly give a song in the background as we meditate on who Jesus is, as we're taking, partaking of the communion. You, you, you can partake. If you're a Christian, you can partake of the communion today, and you can seek God with your whole heart, one of our deacons. Of 
As Christ, he makes his way into that upper room. Seems like just another Passover for the disciples, but this is the Passover. That paschal lamb sits before them. Jesus, the one that will knock them off their feet. The one that was able to speak to the storm and said, peace be still. He grabs a piece of bread and he breaks it. He said, this represents my body that's going to be broken for you. As often as you eat, let us do it in remembrance of him. Let us eat together. within our teeth. That's the way his body was crushed. All because of our sins. He grabs that goblet of wine, picks it up. They would share it amongst themselves. That this represents my blood that will be shed for you as often as you drink. Let us do it in remembrance of him. Let us drink together. Hallelujah. Anybody love them today? Hallelujah. 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 Come on to your feet. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Well, as we prepare to depart this place, I want you to keep Jesus on your mind. We have an outlet meeting, uh, those who are interested in uh, being a part and helping out with our, our young adults. Uh, please stay right after this service in the fellowship hall. It said it will be at 1 o'clock, but it will be early. We'll just transition out of this service and uh, go to that and get all the information. Also, everything is still on the calendar for this week. we got Bible study on uh, tomorrow, a topical Bible study. So please come on out. Uh, let those folks uh, know who missed today that they can come to Bible study on Monday and they can make up for their Sunday. Uh, it'll be at 7 o'clock. Uh, we've been having a wonderful study there. Look at the temperature. The temperature is going to stay up. We start at 7. We're out by 745. So please come on out to that. Don't forget Tuesday, noonday Bible study. Wednesday, start at 630, our prayer and 7 o'clock. We're in the book of Leviticus. So just an amazing study, those that have been with us. Um, I never thought that we could dig so much out of these scriptures, but God has been doing, doing a wonderful job. And don't forget about um, this coming Saturday, uh, Sister Laverne. Uh, she's going to be speaking um, um, on our issues, breaking strongholds, uh, mental health. And um, you say, well, I don't have mental issues. Yeah, you do. Everybody got mental issues. We really, we all have mental issues. And so we need, we need... Um, um, for God to speak into our hearts. So I'm so glad um, she's a doctorate. She has her doctorate, and uh, she has a great understanding of mental health. But most importantly, she has the spirit. She's royalty, and she has spirit, so she's able to minister us on both sides. So come on out, 11 o'clock, if you can, to uh, get that and speak into your lives that you may be encouraged. You love the Lord. Thank you for coming out. Father, I just pray blessings upon these, your people. Lord, just order their steps as they uh, go out from this place and go out to fellowship with their family and loved ones. Even pray for those who were able to sleep late today and are refreshed for tomorrow, God. Just bless them also. And Lord, thank you. Thank you for keeping Ebenezer's lights on, Lord. We know a tree could have fell on the line and we wouldn't have been able to press on with our services, but thank you. Thank you for the fellowship. I pray for blessings upon Pastor Edwards Church, Lord, and his members, Lord. And I thank you by your grace and mercy for opening the door for him to come over to Ebenezer and to bless our hearts, Lord. Now, Father, help us to be more like you. 
thank you again that you knock us off our feet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you greet somebody before you leave today again? Amen. <laughs>